and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mergim and just behind me over there is what I believe to be the world's largest dedicated open air cycling facility that is completely free to use to the public known as the Skylane. This facility has had its doors closed for the past several months due to the fourth lockdown that came into place back in July. But since the start of this week as part of the government's new strategy to live with Covid, Skylane is operational once again. So hang around as we explore together the state of the art cycling facility here at Bangkok Sawanapum International Airport. To access this facility, you park your car in a car park over there, and then you go through this security stand, to which you then have to walk all the way down this pathway to go to the SNAP office to register and sign up to be able to use the facility. You get your wristband, and then if you've got your very own bike, you're off on the way onto the track, or if you don't have your bike, you hire from this place over here. While I go get a rental bike, I just want to give you a heads up that you need to bring your passport when you sign up at the SNAP office. Otherwise, if you bring any other form of ID such as your driver's license, like I did, they will give you a one day temporary wristband. Now the bikes you can rent start from 400 baht for a hybrid bike and go all the way up to 900 baht for a top of the range road bike from brands such as Trek, which will cover you for four hours and you get a helmet included. Note there is a late return fee that is 50 baht for every 15 minutes in which you're late. So make sure you definitely return the bike on time. I've gotten changed out of my normal trousers and I've put some shorts on because uh, it's just going to be easier to cycle in. And I don't want the bottom of my trousers getting caught on the chain. So, by the way, before I forget, this is the snap wristband here. This is the temporary one. You can see it says temporary there, right? I, I think the reason why they call it a snap wristband because uh, it literally snaps onto your wrist like that. But yeah, it works through some sort of NFC contactless technology. There's almost like a toll gate in which you have to go through to be able to get onto the track. And on the side of the toll gates, you basically tap this snap thing on the side of the door and it lets you through. Also, I've been bitten by mosquitoes twice. If you're ever thinking about coming here, just make sure you bring a lot of mosquito repellent because there's a lot of grass and water around here where mosquitoes like to hang around. Wow, look at that. High tech. Interesting. So this is the entrance here on the left and we'll go up this ramp. Oh, it's a steep ramp. No turning right, turn left. So the track is a only anti-clockwise direction. You can't go in the other direction. Everyone has to cycle in an anti-clockwise direction. Right there. Oh, he's a Brit as well. With one of the worst road accident fatality rates in the world, Thailand's biggest airport AOT and commercial bank SCB joined forces in one of the country's biggest corporate social responsibility projects to bring about a safe and inclusive cycling environment for the people of Thailand. The facility first opened its doors as a two-lane green track back in 2014 and quickly went on to receive a great deal of international recognition, with CNN Travel rating it as the world's best airport bike path. Over the years, as the project gained popularity and the backing from sponsors and investors grew, the facility underwent a number of large transformations that are present today, such as the obvious blue and purple track with two lanes each, snap contactless technology for easy access control, and a spacious parking facility with 1,530 spaces. Right, so we've reached the first service area on this race course, and uh, I need to get myself a well-deserved drink. I'm gonna do snap scan here. How do I receive my goods? Oh, I have to open the flap like that. Now that I've reached the first area and I've allowed myself to rest a little bit and have a drink of water, let me tell you a little bit about this racetrack. Obviously there's two types of tracks here. There's the blue track and the purple track and both are 23 and a half kilometers long. The blue track is 4.8 meters wide, while the purple track is slightly smaller at 3.8 meters wide. So the blue track is for like going at a slow, normal, leisurely pace, whereas the purple track is for those people who are like dressed from head to toe in Lycra. You know, they've got their race bikes, they've got their aerodynamic helmets, cleats all clipped in, 
they've become one with their bicycle and they're just there to go super fast and break every personal best record every time they come here. I've not yet seen anyone on the purple track as of today, so it's pretty quiet today, I'm not gonna lie. As for the quality of the track, um, it does look a bit outdated. It is asphalt and it is fairly smooth, but there are a few like little holes here and like brown spots as you can see but, i mean these brown spots are pretty big and i don't know what they could be though i think it's just where it's rusted up to be honest well after a bit of digging on the web i discovered that these brown spots and streaks that are found all over the track are caused by pieces of iron sulfide in the asphalt called pyrite that rust when exposed to water over time the continuous rusting will cause the local area in the asphalt to swell and eventually erupt leaving these small marble sized holes on the surface but anyway let's let's quickly review the bike they were going to give me like a really old trek madonna bike it looks so beat up, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and they didn't even have like smooth tires. And I was like, can I get a new bike? And they're like, yeah, but the bike that we're gonna give you is slightly smaller for your size. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I just want a new bike. And so they gave me this giant. It's pretty neat. I like it. Um, it's got fairly thick profile tires, but it's smooth which is important for going fast. We've got some decent Shimano group set. The handlebar, it's too wide for me. What else? I like the color. We've got disc brakes right there. Decent disc brakes. The gear mechanism is very smooth. So that's to downshift, that's to upshift. Uh, we've got a bell. Don't ever have to use the bell because there's no one really in your way here. And yeah, uh, the seat is very comfortable. I would say that's a, probably a silicone seat there. You've got a little cup holder there to place your plastic water bottles. One thing I should mention about plastic water bottles is they said you can't bring plastic water bottles. Um, they'll confiscate it at the tollway entrance. But nobody did. Nobody cared. So I got away with it. But the thing is, when you stop at these little rest places here, you actually have to purchase plastic water bottles. So it doesn't really kind of make sense. But before I set off, let's just take a look at the rest place. A nice little 360 seat here. You've got two vending machines on either side, a toilet tray for men and for women. Uh, each one of these lampposts is labeled with a number and there's actually three pit stops along the entire track. So the first one is at 149. I believe the second one will be at 300 and the last and final one will be at around about 449. All right, I'm feeling good. I should say this bike is very smooth to ride. As the track boxes an airport, I was a little worried about inhaling aircraft emissions from planes coming in and taking off. However, I did feel a little more at ease when I found out that I could check the air quality on the track by visiting the Skylane official website, where they give you real-time readings such as PM2.5 and CO2 levels, along with a bunch of other indicators including wind speeds, which I definitely checked out before I came out here today. But yeah, this is the second pit stop. Um, it's exactly at the 300 post. That cloud in the back is rather grey and scary. I can feel droplets of rain actually falling down. But to be honest, I'm not complaining about the weather because I couldn't have picked a better day to cycle on this track. Because imagine trying to do this in broad daylight with the sun shining down, no clouds to protect you from those UV rays. You'd probably die from a combination of exhaustion and dehydration. You see the way in which the current is flowing quite vigorously in this direction. I've been cycling upwind so i've had this huge headwind the entire time i've been cycling since the moment i got to this track looks like we've got some distressed doggy in the back over there the moment i get round the track the headwind is actually going to turn into a tailwind which is going to help me a lot so the last final stretch or leg of the track is actually going to be a lot easier than this first leg that i'm doing and uh one thing i want to point out is that these lights up here are actually powered by these huge solar panels. Look how big that solar panel is in comparison to the light. And every single one of these lampposts, apart from this one here, I'm not sure what happened to this one, um, has these solar panels on it. One thing you might find interesting is that in Thailand, there is no daylight saving bollocks that happens. Okay, you know what I'm thinking about doing? I'm thinking about setting off because it looks like it's raining over there. But I need to go in this direction and it looks like it's clear skies. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get a move on. We've got the cleats as well.
you see that? There's a guy on the back of that with his bike. Probably got a flat tire. It's starting to rain quite a bit. You can see my t-shirt is a little bit wet here. It sure doesn't look great over there. And I don't know if I should carry on riding through that possibly or stay here parked up until it subsides. But man, this purple track right here. Oh, it looks brand spanking new. You see that? There's like two ways in which you can actually go around this little pond here. You can go over the bridge, which is the blue track, or you go on this flatter route. I haven't done no hands in a long time. And to be able to do it on a bike that I'm not even really familiar with is, I think, pretty impressive. I've actually crossed the section where I no longer have a headwind coming in my direction. I've actually got a wind coming in from the side now. The side wind isn't as bad as a headwind. I think I can actually crank up the gears now. Here we go. Well, there we have it, people. That was my 23.5 kilometer ride around the Sky Lane here at Sawana Punt International Airport. I've only got about 30 minutes before I have to return the bike back. Otherwise, I'll start getting charged 50 bar for every 15 minutes, as I mentioned previously. But as you can hear, there's like loads of screaming kids to my right over here, which is like a little kids playground. Right now, the time is 4.22 and it seems like there's more people coming here at this moment in time maybe because it's cooler right now than it was like a couple hours ago this thing right here is a landmark here at the sky lane known as the sky wing this sky wing is made from 100 percent recycled pet plastic bottles so this portion of the wing actually has to be inflated with air in order for it to maintain its structure otherwise it'll just droop down and you can actually hear air being pumped into there it's really nice though it complements this facility really well. So the facility also has what's called a balance park for kids just behind me here, where kids from the age of four to 12 years old can come here and get a bike for free and practice their cycling skills. And they've even got scooters over there. What a brilliant place to bring up children. How family friendly is this? Once you're done with your cycling, skateboarding, running, whatever exercise it is you're doing, you can stop by the inbuilt shops that they have here to get yourself some deep fried chicken in which they have KFC, coffee, uh, there's a 7-Eleven here. If you're in Thailand, I would definitely recommend to put this on your bucket list. Aim to spend about a day here, a day to half a day at least. Right, now that I've got my coffee, and I've almost actually finished it, um, I think I'm gonna start heading home now, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and more importantly, share the video with friends and family. Mm -hmm.